by it and, and be with you, Lord, and worship you and love you and let you bring peace to us even in the midst of a storm. Lord, we, we thank you, Lord, that even though in this world we will have tribulation, you said that you'd bring us through that you would be our shield and our fortress and our deliverer. For you are our God and we praise your name this morning. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You know, I had a weird, I just had a weird battle over this Sunday for some reason. And uh, praying about it last night, praying about it this morning. Uh, almost to the point of God to even want me to preach because uh, I didn't, didn't didn't feel any specific direction. Though there's a million things I could talk to you about, um, I try to ask God what He wants me to talk to you about, and not just be you know something out of my head. And the only thing I felt was just just wait and see who's here. And sometimes the Lord doesn't tell me until I get. Uh, into praise and worship and then he'll tell me what the message is and um but as we were in praise and worship it came as clear as a bell so uh, i want you to turn with me this morning to first peter chapter five um first peter chapter five and this is just something that's been on my heart kind of all week i, I i've thought about it in different ways but i i'm not going the direction i thought i was going to be going with it but I do need to share this this with you. I think you need to see these verses and you need to think about them. Uh, because, of course, as a church, we teach, you know, that uh, Christians have authority over the devil. We do have power and authority over the devil, right? Everybody ought to know Luke ten nineteen in this church. Luke ten nineteen. Jesus said, Behold, what? I give unto you power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Now, sometimes we take... Uh, scripture like that out of out of its context of course jesus didn't mean you'll go through this battle that we're in unscathed but that god would bring you through it if you stay if you stick with him he'll bring you through each battle right how many of you know that i've been through a few battles since i've been here in, in auburn i've been through a few uh over the last 24 25 years now i've been through a few battles and you just need to know that this battle with Satan is, uh, it gets tough sometimes. And I want to show you what Peter says about it. And uh, and just you need to understand as Christians that sometimes it's going to be rough. Mentally, emotionally, physically, financially sometimes. Um, loneliness, temptation, um, persecution. Uh, even if it's just being snubbed, you know, seem like, you know, being snubbed by people, but let's read this. Um, we're going to start at verse one because it's just too much good stuff here to, to pass up, but he's writing and exhorting elders and other pastors. And he says, the elders, which are among you, I exhort who am also an elder and a witness of the sufferings of Christ and also a partaker of the glory that shall be revealed. And so he tells these elders in verse 2, Feed the flock of God which is among you, taking the oversight thereof, not by constraint, but willingly. And again, that means not because somebody's forcing you, not for filthy lucre. Don't be, just be doing it for money. And we know that's not happening around here. But of a ready mind, Right? neither as being lords over God's heritage, but being examples to the flock. And when the chief shepherd shall appear, you shall receive a crown of glory that fadeth not away. Likewise, ye younger, submit yourselves unto the elder. Yea, all of you be subject one to another and be clothed with humility. For God resists the proud and gives grace to the humble. Humble yourselves, therefore, unto the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you in due time. Casting all your care upon him, for he cares for you. Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about seeking whom he may devour. Whom resist steadfast in the faith, knowing that the same afflictions are accomplished in your brethren that are in the world. But the God of all grace, who has called us unto his eternal glory by Christ Jesus, after that you have suffered a while, make you perfect 
establish, strengthen, and settle you. To him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Now, I wanted to read that to you because I want you to see some verses I think get overlooked sometimes. You know, verse 7, we hear verse 7, I mean, not verse 7, but we hear verse 8 quite frequently. Be sober. That means be alert, be vigilant. That means be aware that there is danger involved with Satan and his demonic forces. That they are as a roaring lion seeking whom they may devour. Okay? So the devil and his demonic forces are seeking, constantly seeking whom they may devour. They're constantly moving. They're constantly, he says, as a roaring lion. Why is that? Because they're constantly crouching in the shadows. They're constantly stalking you like prey, trying to smell a weakness, trying to see a place where they can attack you. And they hear your words. Sometimes that gives them a hint. Sometimes they see an action or, or they just know that, that we're an area you're vulnerable in. But I wanted you to see, I mean, everybody knows that we're in a, a constant war with Satan and with the demonic forces. But notice what he says after this verse. He says, of course, whom resist steadfast in the faith. And that's, again, what we teach you. Bind the devil. Rebuke the devil. Resist the forces of darkness. Take control over your thoughts. Cast down imaginations. You know, all those things that you've been taught to do in the name of Jesus to exercise that authority that we have in Christ to resist the devil. But notice he doesn't say that in this fight you will never have an affliction or suffering. Look what he says here. He goes on down and he says, knowing that the same afflictions are accomplished in your brethren that are in the world. Wait a minute. So he's sitting there talking about you're going to come under satanic attacks at times. Fight it with everything that's in you. Resist it steadfast in the faith. But know that it is not going to be a cakewalk. It will feel like afflictions. And I can just tell you that there are seasons, are, you know, there may be a week, sometimes it's a day, maybe, maybe even it's a season, a month or a few months. You can be under a serious onslaught of the devil more than, more than anything in your mind. And this is where the number one, this is the number one battlefield is your mind. And I don't care if the devil can come with, with, sly thoughts that make you depressed or he can come with sly thoughts that make you feel lonely even though you're around people he can come with sly thoughts making you feel like you're not good enough he can come with sly thoughts and make you feel like you know um you know you really you really can't do this you can't walk this walk and then he can come with the temptations you know why don't you just why don't you just have that beer why don't you just go out to that bar why don't you just you know, why don't you just go out with that person you know you shouldn't go out with? Why don't, you know, he comes along with all these things, tries to make you feel bad emotionally, physically, and spiritually, so that then he can slip in temptation. And I just want to tell you that no one's immune. I don't care, five-fold minister or not, no one's immune to, you, to the bombardment of the devil. And this week particularly, I can just say, I have had the bombardment of Satan against my mind and my body. I mean everything. And I, you know, I get up in the mornings and pray and still put on the armor of God, bind the devil, resist the devil. But that doesn't mean I'm not going to have any wrestling match with him. And I just, I want to say this because, again, I know we got some, some people that have been Christians in here for a long time, and we got others that haven't been really walking with the Lord for a long time. And you just need to be reminded or you need to know that this fight sometime is not easy. It can, it can almost feel, make, the devil is just brilliant at making, can almost make you just feel miserable. Just, just miserably unhappy with everything in your life if you constantly listen to his thoughts but notice he says here the same afflictions don't be surprised every true christian in the world that's really walking with jesus that really loves jesus that really is trying to obey the lord and get close to the lord is going to go through these same afflictions the devil is not going to leave people alone if they're serious about jesus amen 
He wants you to fall. Somehow, some way, he wants you to fall to disgrace the name of Jesus or even to get you to fall to the point where you, you know, not that you can't be forgiven, not that you can't get back up and, and, and ask God for forgiveness and move on past that, but he wants to get you to fall and, and, and then go, I mean, he'll be the one to make you fall or help you fall. And then he'll be the one to say, see, you can't do it. It's just constant in your mind, constant stuff. And I'm just telling you, don't think it's strange. He says here, it's sometimes it feels like you're just being afflicted. And it's in your mind. Everybody know what I'm talking about? Sometimes it's fear. You know, and I, I want to say this and make this very clear to you guys. And I almost wanted to preach on this today, but I want to make this very clear. I know that, that I preach on the end times stuff, and that stuff is coming. It's happening now, and things are going to happen. And, it, and, the, and it's, it's going to be some, some frightful things that we see happen in the world. But the bottom line is, do we believe that our God is our refuge and our fortress and our God in whom we trust, and that though 10,000 fall at our side or, and then 1,000 at our right hand, it will not come near us, that God can protect us in the midst of any horrible thing that's going on and trust him that if he delivers me or if he lets me be a martyr, either way, he will be with me at that moment through that time. And there's no fear. No fear. You should bind fear, rebuke fear, cast it down, resist it. Do not let it settle in your head. Amen. I trust God. Uh, you know what? When, when the economy fails and all these things happen, do, do I believe God? God may multi start doing miracles of multiplying food. You know what I mean? Like he did with the widow and Elijah. You know? I mean, I trust God. I believe God is going to deliver me deliver my family and he's going to do what he wants to do with us and i'm not going to walk in fear amen our god is bigger than satan he's bigger than the antichrist he's bigger than the un he's bigger than the the, the beast kingdom he's bigger than the mark of the beast he's bigger and stronger and more powerful than all that and i got news for the devil not everyone's going to be martyred some people are going to walk through this whole thing and be raptured alive so that means he doesn't get everybody, right? Some people are going to have to be tested and tried and lay down their life for Jesus. I don't care. We, either way, I'm prepared. I don't care. I, I know Jesus is real. I can't wait to be in heaven. You know, this week we heard on, on the news, you know, about the, the pastor, the, the full gospel pastor in Iran who was on trial and, and was scheduled to be executed. I think mean, he's probably executed this weekend, I mean, they, it was like imminent that simply because he was a Christian, he was in court in Iran because uh, he was accused of apostasy from Islam, becoming a Christian, and he was pastoring a little church, and they're, and they're going to kill him. And, you know, I was listening to that, and I go, you know, that's horrible, and my heart felt for his family. But the bottom line is, you know what? If they do, that moment, he's with Jesus, and I thought, man, that's kind of a not a bad deal really <laughs> you know what i mean but we just you know either way we got to be prepared and not be in fear now, let me show you this this is something that paul said and and well before we turn there look at he says in verse 10 but the god of all grace he was called us unto eternal glory by christ jesus after you've suffered a while you see that word suffer there now this word covers all not just physical suffering. It really, the, in the Greek, it's talking about emotional suffering, mental and emotional suffering that the devil brings against our soul and into our minds. And let me give you a little clue. The devil and the demon spirits aren't going to spend a whole lot of time on someone who is not serious about following jesus the more serious you are the more determined you are to really get close to the lord and obey him you're going to attract the attention of these forces i mean some people get the wrong idea that becoming a christian and then having 
being baptized in the Holy Spirit or having the power of God or the authority means we're going to walk through this life unscathed. Well, they, they're wrong, right? But still, you can make it through. Look at what, go, go to Second Timothy. Second Timothy chapter 4. This was right before Paul, the Apostle Paul, was executed. And actually, he was beheaded. But after many years of walking with the Lord. But I like what he says here. Um, this is all so good here. Let's, let's start reading at verse 6. He says, For I am now ready to be offered, and the time of my departure is at hand. I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. Henceforth, there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give to me at that day, and not to me only, but unto all them that also love his appearing. Then he tells Timothy, Do your diligence to come shortly unto me, for Demas has forsaken me, having loved this present world, and is departed unto Thessalonica, the Cretans to Galatia, and Titus to Dalmatia. He said, Only Luke is with me. Take Mark and bring him with thee, for he is profitable to me for the ministry. And Tychicus I have I sent unto Ephesus. The cloak or the coat that I left at Troas with Carpus, when you come, bring with you and the books, but especially the parchments. Now Alexander the coppersmith did me much evil. The Lord reward him for his works, of whom be thou ware also, for he has greatly withstood our words. And then Paul says this, At my first answer no man stood with me, but all men forsook me. I pray God that it may not be laid to their charge. Notwithstanding, the Lord stood with me and strengthened me, that by me the preaching might be fully known and that all the Gentiles might hear. And I was delivered out of the mouth of the lion. Now do you see that right there? And then he goes on to say, And the Lord shall deliver me from every evil work and will preserve me unto his heavenly kingdom, to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. Now I read that because I wanted you to see this was Paul kind of, this is kind of his last words. A man's last words are pretty important, don't you think? And he said, you know what? The Lord, and this is what stuck with me this morning as we were in worship. The Lord delivered me out of the mouth of the lion. Oh, that means that he was in the mouth of the lion. You know what I'm saying? And I thought about the story where David was talking about how a lion came into the flock, remember, and grabbed a lamb and how he went and and took the lion by the mouth and killed the lion and delivered that lamb out of that lion's mouth. How many of you know that the, 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 the lamb probably had some teeth marks? <laughs> he survived. The little lamb survived but had some teeth marks. And I think that's what Paul was referring to right here. He's like, you know, I was beaten on my back. I was whipped five times. I was beaten with rods three times. I was stoned. I was shipwrecked in the deep. I was, how many times he was thrown in prison, I don't know. But he said, the Lord delivered me from the mouth of the lion. But you know what? He still had some teeth marks, didn't he? It wasn't all smooth sailing. It wasn't a cruise ship that he was on. It was a sinking ship out there that, <laughs> in the middle of a hurricane. But God stood with him, and, and Paul didn't go anywhere until it was his time to go be with Jesus. That's what I love about that. He said, I have fought a good fight. I have kept the faith. Now, you know what? When I was a younger man and wasn't saved, I used to fight. Let me tell you what a good fight is. A good fight's when you win. <laughs> you know, fun to lose, right? But I've been in some, I've been in some that uh, I won, but it didn't look like I won. You know what I mean? I came out with busted lips and black eyes, but, you know, the other fellow was in worse shape. That's kind of like a boxing match, isn't it? Well, this is the war we're in. Say this with me. I can win this fight. Say it's a good fight because I can win it. 
<laughs> it's a good fight. But it's a fight. Right? He didn't say it was a cakewalk. He said it was a fight. Right? So here, Paul's talking about it's a fight. Peter's talking about the devil's coming as a roaring lion and, and it's going to cause afflictions. And it's going to cause some suffering. going to cause some difficulties, right? But it's a good fight. And when he said the words, I have finished my course, you know what that's saying? Man, this is just, this just makes me shut. I finished what God had for me to do. Whew. Not very many people can say that, can they? Paul said, I obeyed God. This is what basically what he's saying. I obeyed God and I finished everything he had for me to do. And because of that, there's a crown waiting for me. See, I just think about Paul. You think about it. You know, at some point he wrote his last letter. At some point he led the last person to Jesus. He was supposed to lead to Jesus. At some point, he mentored the last elder and the last young pastor for the last time. And then he said, I finished my course. If you're going to do the will of God for your life, don't expect it to be easy. It's a fight. There will be victories. See, we forget a war is not just one battle. A war is many battles. And some battles you win. And some battles you lose. And some battles you're just glad to get through it at all. Right? But in Jesus' name, we get through them. Turn, turn with me to this scripture, Revelation 12. And I guess... One of the reasons that uh, this has been laid on my heart today about the battle is, you know, for instance, as you're, as you're turning there, the battle, one of the battles the devil brings against the mind of the brain is the, the sexual lust issue. Okay? And, you know, nobody in here, and even younger ones, he brings those thoughts and images to the head. Okay? Now, there's an old saying, you can't help if a bird flies over your head, but you can keep it from building a nest in your hair, right? So we're going to get bombarded at times with thoughts and temptations in this area. But I want to tell you, when the devil's getting ground in you, and when you know you're going to be headed toward possibly falling, is when you meditate on it, when you let it stay there, when you let it linger, when you let it continue to roll around and ruminate in your head and this this area i'll say this this area the sexual lust and temptation and sexual sin this right here is going to take a lot of people to hell it's going to take a lot of christians to hell i can't tell you how many christians sleep with their boyfriends or girlfriends every weekend or during the week or even living together or how many people are just addicted to pornography? And, 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 and Christians. And I don't doubt at some point or another, I don't doubt that some of them may not be have ever been saved, but I don't doubt that some of them truly were at some point in the past. I don't doubt that at all. A Christian can do anything they want to do. But I'm sitting here going, that there's so many that are convinced that fornication and adultery and pornography and the lust of the eyes and having their heart full of it and constantly thinking and meditating on, on sexual lust and sin, they, but they think that, that they're still okay with God and everything's all right. Well, it's going to be a rude awakening on Judgment Day because it's not what Pastor Dean says. It's not what Pastor at, at first this church or second that church says. It's not, it's not what, the, it's what this book says. So we don't get control of our thought life or what we meditate on. It'll eventually lead to actions. And let me, let me say this as well with this before I move on. Thoughts 
constant thoughts that you allow lead to actions and then actions open the door for bigger demons and then you get all kinds of justifications on why it's okay for you to do that thing there's gonna be a lot of christians who are drinking who are sleeping around who are addicted to pornography and they, they're going to they, they actually think they're going to heaven is a rude awakening coming and i and, and i think about this a lot because i i know there's a real battle and and when it comes to this battle you either overcome it or it overcomes you you know revelation 12 i love this verse He's speaking about the, the devil. Look at verse 9. And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceives the whole world. He was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. And I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, Now has come salvation and strength in the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ. For the accuser of our brethren is cast down, which accused them before our God day and night. And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb, by the word of their testimony, and they love not their lives even unto the death. You can put it this way. We overcome the devil first and foremost by the blood of the Lamb. Meaning if we confess our sins and forsake them, the blood of Jesus cleanses us from all unrighteousness, right? We can go to 1 John and read that in a second. But then secondly, by what comes out of our mouth, the word of our testimony. And do you know that the words out of your mouth can be what Jesus says, what the word of God says. It can be what God wants or it can be what the world wants. It can be what the flesh wants. But we overcome the devil by the blood of Jesus, what's coming out of our mouth. And because we've made up our minds that if it comes down to it, we're not going to save our lives if we have to lose them for his sake. People leave that one out a lot, don't they, when they quote that verse. You'll hear all the time, we overcome Satan by the blood of the Lamb, word of our testimony. They leave out that love not our lives unto death. Right? We need to finish our course, though. So. Go to Colossians. The verse I was going to quote first John, I just quote it first John. If we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another and the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from all sin. If, if, if. Don't you love all those ifs in the Bible? <laughs> if we walk in the light. Did you get to Colossians? Chapter 1. This is what you need to pray right here. This is what I pray for you a lot of times here. And I want you all to pray this for me as well. Paul said this right here. He said in verse 9, he said, For this cause we also since the day we heard of it, or your faith, he said, We do not cease to pray for you and to desire that you might be filled with the knowledge of his will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding that you might walk worthy of the Lord unto all pleasing, being fruitful in every good work and increasing in the knowledge of God and strengthened with all might according to his glorious power unto all patience and long suffering with joyfulness, giving thanks unto the Father which has made us meet to be partakers of the inheritance of, saint, of the saints in light who has delivered us from the power of darkness and translated us into the kingdom of his dear Son in whom we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sins. I want you to see that part where he said, I pray that you might be filled with the knowledge of his will and all wisdom and spiritual understanding that you might walk worthy of the Lord unto all pleasing. Bible says you have not because you ask not. To fight this fight, to finish your course, to do what God wants you to do, 
to fight the devil and to persevere, you got to know God's will in given situations. So you got to pray this. Amen? I know this kind of goes back to praying and hearing God's voice, but you got to pray this. This is a prayer that Paul prayed for them often. I mean, think about this. The Apostle Paul down on his knees praying. I pray for the Colossians, for the church there, that they would be filled with the knowledge of your will, Lord. In all wisdom, spiritual understanding, I pray that you'd be filled. Why? Because he wanted them to overcome the devil and overcome the temptations and overcome, you know, the issue of failure and not fulfilling God's plan for their life. So I say all that to say this. Don't let the devil stop you. Don't let the attacks, don't let the afflictions, don't let any suffering, don't let any, you know, he may get you in his mouth, but the Lord will deliver you out of his mouth if you keep standing with the Lord and you keep fighting and you keep resisting. And if anybody tells you you're going to walk this walk without any teeth marks, they just lied to you. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Persecution come. You know, I could just I could just go through a lot of verses, but I'm gonna stop this morning. Don't think it strange, Peter said, concerning the fiery trial which is to try you, as though some strange thing happened to you. Right? It's not strange. It's normal. The devil is going about as a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. These afflictions that he causes is common to every true brother and sister in the world. But here's the good news. He said, after you've suffered a while, that in 1 Peter 5, he said, after you've suffered a while, the Lord will perfect you. That means bring maturity into your life. He will strengthen you. He will establish you. The word strengthen and establish me there mean to turn in a in a certain direction. He'll give you clear direction. I think some people want God to just tell them everything of what to do. They don't understand the fight comes first, then he tells you. And sometimes he just tells you a little part, and then you got to fight through something and get the next part. That's why he said we know in part, we prophesy in part, but when Jesus comes, then face to face, we won't have to have this in part business. All right? God doesn't give you everything because he wants you to fight through the afflictions and the suffering and the temptations and the de demonic spirits. He wants you to fight through that fasting and prayer and worship and staying in the word and fight through it. And then hear what he's saying. Do that and then move to the next thing. Amen. Move from one battle to the next. Fight the good fight of faith. Finish your course. Finish what God's called you to do. You might find out a piece here. Do it. You find out a next piece in a few months or a year. Find that out and then do it. You know, I didn't know 20 years ago I'd have a church in Auburn, Alabama. You don't find out everything in, in the beginning. Matter of fact, I didn't even think I'd ever be a pastor. But God gives pieces of the puzzle as you keep following and fighting and following and fighting and hearing god's voice man he's got some good things for you i think he's i think he's going to use all of you in a powerful way in the days ahead he's going to give you let you hear his voice and and know things about people and minister to people in ways that you you may have only have once or twice or maybe never. And God's going to start doing things like that through you. You're going to see people get healed through you. You're going to see people get delivered. You're going to cast out demons, not just Pastor Dean. You're going to cast demons out of somebody. And they're going to freak out. They're going to go, wow, I didn't had no idea, you know, that I could be free from this. I mean, you guys are going to do that stuff. You guys are going to raise the dead. I believe that and heal the sick and cast out demons and 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 freak the world out out here you know I, I do believe that with all my heart but the devil wants to stop that that's what i'm saying he wants to tempt you attack you and get to the point he gets you away from that man and no one's immune i get it the devil working on me and attacking me and i know that you're going to get it you know, I mean, that you can have the most godly man or woman walking with the Lord and an onslaught happen. I mean, look at David. The man after God's own heart. 
The man who loved God with all his heart. The man who suffered for 15 years running from Saul. I mean, he suffered great affliction. He lost everything. because Simply because God put the anointing and the call of God on his life. He got the fury of the devil and of Saul who was being influenced by evil spirits. And he had to run and live in caves and run for his life. And it wasn't a pleasant existence. And some of us think, well, you know, I guess you read it. And you think, well, that was just, you know, maybe that was just a year or two. No, about 15 years of his life was spent. We know it was 12 to 15 years before he stepped into what God called him to do. But any point in that, he could have walked away. And matter of fact, he almost did. But then years later, he's king. He's a godly king. He's one of the most godly kings Israel ever had. And he was supposed to be at battle. It says when the kings were supposed to be at battle, David was at home. So he wasn't where he was supposed to be, where God wanted him to be. And that's when he saw Bathsheba out there bathing on the rooftop. It's believed that Bathsheba's uncle, Ahithophel, put her up to it. But the bottom line was, if David would have been where God wanted him to be, that incident would have never happened. But a godly man, out of God's will, not where he should be, not doing what he should be doing, the temptation can come, and it, and, and it was devastating to his life. The child died. Plague came into Israel. This destruction it brought destruction. Now, David was a man that deeply repented and humbled himself and deeply repented. He didn't kill the prophet who came and said, you're the man. And that's why David was forgiven. It's because of the depth of his repentance, his humility and repentance. But it still brought, the Lord told him, think about this. I'm going to forgive your sin, but the sword will never leave your house. It's not a prophecy you want. There's always a cost to sin. There's always a cost to falling. There's always a cost to uh, giving in to temptation. And it's horrible. Even if you're forgiven. Because the Bible says we will reap what we sow. So. I just pray. My prayer for you and I share this this morning. Though you you may be the strongest Christian in the room right now, and you might be uh, doing better than you've ever done in your entire life, but that does not mean you're immune to something down the road. Be careful of being alone with the opposite sex. A care, a careful, you know, putting yourself in situations. Just be careful, especially single people. Be careful. The devil knows how to set up a situation. To, to take you down and why is he going to do that listen to me why does he want to do that because there's people around you that even whether you know it or not they're watching you they're watching your life they're watching your testimony god's dealing with them god's drawing them even though they may be resisting but god's using your life as a light to them and if you fall and blow it and they see it or the that influence that light for the time that that's gone in their lives always think that whenever you feel tempted or whenever the devil's trying to bring sin into your life it's not just you it's going to affect you might get up and be fine you might repent you might be okay you might make it still but somebody won't because of the, seeing that That's, that's, I think, one of Satan's biggest lies is to make us think that if, you know, if we sin or we fall, it's only going to affect us. I remember David Wilkerson years ago preaching this message. It was entitled, Be Sure Your Sins Will Find You Out. And he said, first they're going to find you, then they're going to find your family, then they're going to find your workplace, then they're going to find, they're going to, is what Jesus said, very similar. He said, what happens in, in secret will eventually be shouted from the housetops. Little birds of the air come take these things. You know? 
I love what Irvin, Irvin Baxter was talking about. If you, if you have something, <laughs> and this is a, can be a good thing, but if you have something that's a secret, don't tell anybody. Because your person that you tell, that you think's your best friend, that you would only tell a secret to, well, they have a best friend, too, that they would only tell a secret to. And they have a best friend, too, that all <laughs> Oh, don't tell anybody this, you know. Secrets get told, don't they? So, but that's a good thing. Sometimes it's a good thing, right? Some things need to get exposed. I think we're going to see more people getting exposed in the days ahead. And it's not God's God being mean. He's trying to get them out of it. Sometimes I think when we, we, we get away with something for a while, we start get thinking, well, I'm, I'm, I'm okay in this. That's why there's a scripture in Ecclesiastes that said, when, you know, God bears long, with us and we continue in something he said he said in ecclesiastes he said you know the heart man's heart's fully set to do evil when god doesn't judge it quickly god's judgment is really a good thing doesn't feel good sometimes right when discipline and judgment comes but anyway fight these thoughts that come to your head fight them don't let them linger don't let them hang out cast them down get your mind on the word understand that it will be agonizing you know i love what charles finney said in that book right there you see it with the 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 blue and the red stripes right there on that middle shelf that's revival lectures by charles g finney but he said this he said anyone who has the spirit of god any true amount of the spirit of god in their lives will deal with agonizing conflicts with satan and demonic forces it ain't easy sometimes that's what i'm saying Okay, let's pray. Thank you, Jesus. Father in heaven, we just thank you right now. We thank you, Lord, for your word. And we thank you, Lord, that that though the powers of darkness are out there and they're trying to attack and afflict and t- tempt and and make us fall, Lord, that your grace is there. Your strength is there. Your power is there. Your word is there. We can tap into all those weapons, put on the whole armor of God and stand and fight and take the sword of the spirit, which is your word and fight. And we can cast down the imaginations and we don't have to fall. Lord, we don't have to give in to temptation. We don't have to mess up and and ruin our witness to people. We don't have to be like that. Lord, we can stand and walk with you. And Lord, we believe that even if the even if the lion, that devil lion, gets us in his mouth, that you can deliver us out of his mouth. So Lord, we thank you that by the blood of Jesus Christ, by the word of our testimony, because we love not our lives unto the death, because we're willing to resist unto blood if need be, that we can overcome and walk with you and fulfill our course fulfill our destiny and the call on our lives and do everything that you have for us to do. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.